Well, so I thought we'd introduce ourselves to some of, the, some of you who uh, are meeting us for the first time. We know that we've uh, met many of you already. Um, but uh, as uh, Pastor Lynn and Renee said, my name is Peter. Um, I, uh, my background, like Pastor Lynn said, is I practiced medicine for 13 years. Uh, and then I went to law school. And then we moved to Redding, California. We, we were in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we went up north. Um, so we went from... Uh, Basically, total city living to having... How many goats do we have now? Well, we have two pregnant goats. I think we have 15 or 16 and yeah. then a couple a lot, of... <laughs> a lot of goats, a lot of chickens, two dogs, four cats. Like, our life is very, very, very different, uh, but very, very better. Thank God for YouTube. We've learned a lot to how to farm. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do you do? Okay, so I work for Stephen Wendy Backlund, and I think we have a slide for Igniting Hope Ministries. I know you guys have had Stephen Wendy here many times, and you've heard their message, and they have literally transformed our lives. And so I just wanted, we wanted to honor them as well, even though they're not here. Um, the reason we're standing here is because we came on a ministry trip with them, and then we had the opportunity uh, to meet the pastors, and that's how we got connected with this church, and we're just so grateful. So if we, ha if we have a slide of them, we'd love for you to put that up, and if you don't, it's okay. But Steve and Wendy, they do, their message is all about mind renewal, and they really, there they are. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> we, just, we just love them. That's their dog buddy. And so um, if, you're, if you're on the journey of mind renewal and you want to learn more, um, that's a great resource, a great place to start um, being transformed through the renewing of the mind. Yeah. And, and you're, you have a big we're part of that. Your, your role. Yes, so I about. work there. I work for Steve and Wendy now. I gra we graduated third year last year. We graduated um, BSSM. We went through three years of ministry school. Kind of funny. We thought we were going to do one year. Peter wasn't going to do school at all, but God has a sense of humor, and so we just finished three years of ministry school, and so went, and now I work for the Backlands as the belief training director and content developer. I help develop a lot of courses and do things like that, and um, yeah. And we also, we also did something else with Steve and Wendy, right? We yes, did. we are the co-founders of Igniting Marriages. We are passionate about marriages, and you're going to hear why in just a little bit. Um, a, if we could go ahead and put that slide up. We, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit with uh, uh, Pastor Lynn and Craig yesterday about just uh, this kind of culture of empowerment. And that was something that happened last year with um, Steve and Wendy, is they said, hey, why don't we put on a marriage conference? And um, by we, he, he sort of meant, um, yeah, we should do it, but you should do it. And so, <laughs> so we did. And uh, we actually have an, our first in-person one coming up, which is, uh, which is so exciting, but at the same time terrifying, because I'm sure, um, you know, it's like the first time you do anything, right? You're just like, you're like, am I ready really to do this? Like... I mean, maybe, I don't know if maybe I'm the only one here that feels that way, but, but um, yeah, so we have this, we have this in-person marriage conference coming yeah, up. Yeah, right? we do have a slide for it, but if you can't find it, it's no big deal. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it to you eventually. We'll get it, we'll get it to you somehow, but it's on November 17th and 18th. It's a two-day retreat. Um, so if you feel like you just need a boost in your marriage, you know, whether your marriage is in a place like ours where it was literally ready to fall apart and you need reconnection or whether you're doing great and you just want some encouragement and you just want to go and have, get reconnected and, or maybe you just feel like you're living together, you feel more like roommates and you really want to, you don't want to feel that way anymore. You want to get your hearts reconnected and it's a great place to come and do it. And by the way, Reading is only, you can drive there in nine hours, so it's not that far. So um, we thought we'd maybe start off with a couple of testimonies from what happened this weekend, because this weekend was really special. Um, so I'd love to invite Jerry and John up, um, and they're just going to share briefly a little bit about what God did in their heart. Yeah, let's give them a hand. Give them a big hand. Who wants to go first? Oh, I defer. Here you go. Oh, here you go. <laughs> well, um, first of all, I just uh, I want to just thank God for for touching me and healing me. Number one, because um, when I went up there Thursday, I was in pain, and I just I was determined to go because I knew that God had something for me up there. And so He touched me while I was up there, health wise, and in my back, I was really suffering. But so I'm so thankful for that. But I'm just I'm so grateful for the word that. Um, Peter and Travis both brought uh, while we were up there. Um, the, the worship 
and and really that was kind of one of the themes was um, praise and worship, you know, worshiping God and and um, but some of the words that uh, were spoken that really spoke out to me was um, that uh, God is um, intentional and that um, his his intent is to let let us all know how much he loves us and how much he he wants us to just um, surrender and and um, just give it all to him and and just just uh, not hold anything back um, that you know we all face mountains that we that we need to climb and um, these these mountains that are sometimes seem insurmountable, but God is always there. He's always there to help us. All right. Um, man, after sharing with a few men and you guys speaking about marriage, um, everybody spoke on what happened. I mean, Tim, everybody. One of the big things for me was Peter's vulnerability, that really, that was part of my mission of going on this men's trip, is just being vulnerable, allowing the Holy Spirit to work on me, to call things that I know I'm putting aside, and I'm not, I'm trying to ignore, I'm not wanting to work on, and being around someone like Peter, who is vulnerable, and sharing things with us that most men wouldn't want to share, and not only that, but being around somebody who isn't afraid to weep, and allow the Holy Spirit to work on his heart, and to soften his heart was something that went throughout the men's conference, that I seen men just broken and crying and going through things and, and sharing things, and that was something that really, really touched me, is his vulnerability in his marriage and sharing the things that he's gone through really impacted me so much that I, all I can think about was marriage. You guys talking about this marriage thing you guys are working on, and that's all I can think about. I miss my wife so much, and when I got home, I was like, she was like, you guys had fun, I could tell, you know? <laughs> and uh, I just want you know, I know there's a lot of men here that were impacted, and I know a lot of the wives can, when their husbands came home, were probably like, whoa, what happened to you? <laughs> you know, but thank you. So thank good. you for being so vulnerable. Thank you for opening your heart to us. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that you were starting off our first men's retreat, and, and you opened the doors, and... Thank you for sharing your husband with us, <laughs> and uh, it, it means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and to, uh, you know, to all the wives out there that uh, just blessed your husband's going, or even the wives out there that are praying, um, you know, that's, that I owe, I mean, a big part of my salvation is a is a prayer that Melinda prayed, and she said, "Lord, whatever it takes, whatever it takes." And so, I just want to thank all the women in this family that, or all the in this house that are that are praying. You, you guys are powerful, powerful prayers. So, um, yeah, we're married. We have a wonderful marriage, right? But it wasn't always that way. No, it, no, no, it wasn't. There's a little bit of a, a journey how we got here. We've been married 12 years, and um, we have three kids between the both of us um, that are amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, like Melinda said, our marriage wasn't always wasn't always as great as it is now. And uh, I so I grew up um, uh, in in the San Francisco Bay Area. My family is from Northern Europe, and so um, there's a little bit of that uh, kind of culture about performance, right? It's like, you know, you're going to go after it, you're going to do it, you know, don't give up. Um, definitely don't show your feelings, right? Like, you know, like guys don't cry, so, you know, <laughs> no, no, no crying. Um, and, um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, very much kind of about success and performance. And... Um, Growing up, my, my dad, both my parents are phenomenal. Or they are, they're both, they've both passed on. To, but um, my dad was gone a lot. He traveled a ton for work. Uh, and my mom was an alcoholic. And so 
grow, and this is you know all throughout my life. So as a kid, uh, growing up, there was this um, not only a geographic distance, like they weren't there physically a lot, but there was also a relational distance, right? So there wasn't a lot of like, oh, Peter, I love you and hug you. There wasn't a lot of that, and so. Um, I, uh, and I was exposed to pornography at the age of seven, and all of a sudden, pornography became this uh, mechanism to deal with stuff that I didn't even know was inside of me. And um, that pornography uh, turned into lust, and then that lust carried over into infidelity. And... Yeah, so, and my childhood, we, not, we weren't raised in the church. We didn't, we didn't know the Lord, and so um, also raised up. We love our parents. We honor our parents, but grew up in a broken home, you know, uh, dad living in one place, mom living in another place, and we're not making excuses for our actions, but we're just saying, you know, we, I know there's people in here who have had a similar experience where you just didn't grow up knowing the Lord. So I grew up um, just kind of in this environment where I learned early on how to get love and attention through my body, through men. And that is how I learned to receive love. And so when Peter and I married, second marriage, two broken people coming together, we get married and it was like, um, oh, this will be a great idea. This will fix everything. <laughs> now, granted, God did set us up and we, knew, we know we're supposed to be together. But at that time, we were just very broken. So we got married. We brought our children into this marriage. And then um, the truth of everything that was happening eventually came out. Yeah, so um, so here I am. You know, I've lived this. It's it's like this slow progression, right? And you know, I, I think that the enemy likes to work this way, right? It's like it kind of like puts little breadcrumbs out, you know, and you just kind of keep following it. And um, so we get married, and I am deep into just pornography and infidelity. So one night we're on vacation, and um, we're uh, with our kids and. Your sister and, and her family was there. Uh, your, your mom was there. Everybody was there. And um, Melinda looks at my phone and sees a message from another woman. And, you know, I'd been, I mean, I had been, you know, if you've, when you're, when you're living in sin, like the weight is, is tremendous. And so in that moment, there was a part of me that was actually glad that it had come out because I was so tired. I was so tired of just carrying this, but I was so terrified of the light. I was terrified of the light. And so um, Melinda sees this text. We go into our bedroom. Yes, and we're in Lake Tahoe on vacation. The whole family is there. Not the most ideal no. time for all of this to come out. But I had been praying for Peter, and something inside of me knew something was off in our marriage, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And so don't worry, there's a huge redemption in all of this <laughs> if you're sitting there wondering where the, all this is going. But we go down into the bedroom to talk, and um, we, we end up encountering God in such a profound way. I'd love for you to share your, the way God encountered you that night. Yeah, you know, I, um, here we are. Uh, this is both of our second marriages. And um, we go downstairs, and Melinda is laying on the bed, and she's crying, and I'm kneeling on the ground, um, you know, just, um, just, just logistically, just feeling hopeless, right? I mean, this is a hopeless situation. That's the, you know, the world tells you this is hopeless, okay? And so I'm logistically thinking about what does divorce, what does divorce number two look like? Now, the the irony is. Um, that uh, here I was, I, I had been practicing medicine, and, and sort of my jam in surgery was trauma surgery, okay? So if you broke, like, a leg or something, like, I was that guy. And so I was great at, like, fixing other people's trauma, but here I am in this moment experiencing, like, the greatest, one of the, you know, the greatest trauma of my life, and I got nothing. I don't have any tools. I don't have anything. And, and I'm not a believer, and... And all I, all I can think and what I'm whispering and what is kind of like muttering out of my lips is I can't fix this. I can't fix this. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I know a lot, right? You know, I can, I can do a lot of stuff, but this, I'm, I'm, I'm useless. And um, in that moment, um, and this is just like, you know, God's like love for you, that he just like just meets us where we're at, you know? 
as here I am on my knees just next to the bed feeling completely hopeless and um, I go into what I now know is a vision. I didn't then because I wasn't a believer, right? So uh, what I see is I, I, I see myself buried, my, my face is buried in the dirt and I feel uh, something grab me on the back of the neck and a hand reach out. And I look up and I grab, up, grab that hand and it's Jesus. And Jesus just looks at me and he shows me this road that's going through the valley and then up through the foothills and up to the top of a mountain. And he says, Peter, just stay on this road with you. Stay on this road and I'll always be with you. And then it ended. And then you had something happen at the same time. At the same time, I hear an audible voice say, I am going to restore your marriage. And I knew it was the Lord. And I'm sitting there. And again, we have no grid for this. We don't have a supernatural school that we're attending at the time. And I'm going, okay, I've been praying, but I didn't know God could talk to you. I didn't, I had no grid for what was happening. So Peter shares his vision with me. I share what I had just heard. And I'm sitting there thinking, and of course I'm devastated. I'm, I'm completely devastated, but I'm going, I just heard God, and it just gave me enough hope to hold on that there could be restoration in our marriage. Because despite how crazy it sounds, I knew Peter. I knew his heart, and I actually knew he wasn't a bad person. He actually, despite the sin he was living in, he's not a terrible person. And I always think, gosh, that must be how Jesus looks at us whenever we're living in things like that. Wow, I really love them, and that's not who they really are. And so Jesus that day recognized we were in a pit, and we needed pulled out, and he came to pull us out. But that was the beginning of a very, very long journey, because how many of us know, even though we had those encounters, the enemy came in almost the next day. Are you sure God really said, are you sure? You know, he's, he's really sneaky. He came in, tried to cause some doubt and disbelief, but we came home. We found a local church. We talked about the next steps, what they were going to be to restore our marriage. And um, for the next three years, we were kind of in survival mode. You know, we were doing okay. We were, we were going along. We're, you know, I, I had forgiven Peter. Obviously, I had said the words, I forgive him, um, but we didn't really understand what true forgiveness was. Yeah, we, um, you know, we, we came off that, uh, off that mountain, and, uh, you know, my answer was, I need Jesus. That was uh, very, very clear, and I'd given myself to the Lord. Uh, like Melinda said, we joined a church, joined a men's group, was going to counseling. It was just serve your way into the kingdom mode, right? And, um, and like Melinda said, you know, here we are, we're kind of reading about the Bible and the abundance, right, and the authority and the power of who we are, right, as believers. But it didn't feel that way. And Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many of us have had a, an amazing salvation moment, and then after a little while, it kind of wears off, and we were just tired. We were just so tired. And even um, through a series of dreams, God started talking to us three years after all of this had happened. And I, I remember, and, and it was almost like when we gave our life to the Lord, it felt like everything kept going wrong. It was almost like, you know, my dad gets sick with cancer. He passes away. While I'm taking healing classes to learn about the power of God and healing, my, my mom goes through a second divorce. My younger sister was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I mean, it was literally like all of hell broke loose when we, when we gave our hearts to Jesus. Now, of course, that's not true, but the enemy was trying to stop us. He was trying to stop what he knew what he, knew he wanted to do in our marriage. And so we were going through all of these things, and I had a dream one night. God actually spoke to me. He, he showed me I was walking around with this rat. I'm holding this big, ugly rat, and I'm walking around, and my family's like, why do you have that rat? And I go, I don't know. I don't want this rat. I don't know why I have it. And I woke up, and the Lord spoke to me so clearly about unforgiveness, about bitterness, about things that I had in my heart, not just towards Peter, but towards other people as well. And um, that was the beginning of our journey of really learning what forgiveness was. Yeah. And so this was really when all of a sudden that authority, that uh, when we say like the power of forgiveness, it was a real journey of uh, discovering like where does that power come from and and what, what is forgiveness, really? And forgiveness, um, you know, has a lot of definitions, but uh, excuse, uh, to excuse a fault, absolve from payment, pardon, send away, cancel, 
But the one I love the best is that it yields to bestow favor unconditionally. Right? I don't think of that when I think of forgiveness. Bestow favor unconditionally. And, um, you know, forgiveness actually empowers our prayers. Right? Right? And so, and I love this, that uh, here you say, in, in Mark 11, um, and we're going we're gonna to kind of reference a bunch of scripture here, so um, you want to flip fast here. This is Mark 11, 24 to 26. It says, for this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that it is granted to you and you will get it. And this is the part I really love. And when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them and let it drop in order that your Father, who is in heaven, may also forgive you your own fallings and shortcomings and let them drop. And so this really kind of uh, talks a little bit about uh, what forgiveness does in our prayers, why they're, why they're so powerful. Yeah, so the journey of forgiveness was a long one, but we actually, we went through a process called Inner Healing and Deliverance. I know you guys have an amazing breakthrough ministry here. Uh, very similar ministry. It was a very long experience, but we went through this um, process where we actually learned what forgiveness was, and that's actually what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about the power of forgiveness, because forgiveness, when I used to hear that word, I would think like, oh no, I have to be sad, I have to go, and and it, it's like a sad exchange that I'm making with the Lord. But when we really uncovered that forgiveness is actually the key to so much breakthrough that we can have, that forgiveness is actually a release, it actually releases us from some of the things that we've been harboring, that is when we got really excited about it and why we're so passionate on teaching about it because forgiveness is just, oh, it's a weapon. It's actually a weapon in the kingdom that we get to use. We get to lay down, we get to lay down our offense, our, our junk at the feet of Jesus, and he takes it for us for free, you know? So I'm getting way ahead of our message. I get really excited when we talk about this. <laughs> and so Luke uh, 7.47 says, Those who have been forgiven much love much, but those who have been forgiven little love little. We've been forgiven so much. So, a lot. <laughs> a lot. So we go through this process. We learn what true forgiveness is. And true forgiveness is really letting go. And it's not just saying, I forgive this person. It's actually saying, I let go of my right to be right. I let go of holding on to that offense. I let go of what I thought was true, and I, and I actually leave it at the feet of Jesus. And with forgiveness, it's really easy to, um, to weaponize it. It's really easy to want to pick it back up again every time I'm mad at Peter. It's easy for me to— Which is not a lot. Which is—he's <laughs> perfect. He's perfect. But really easy. It's really easy for us sometimes to want to wanna pick up that garbage again from the cross and— I, I always imagine like when I, when I let something go, it's such a release. I'm actually, I'm saying, you know, because Jesus forgave us for so much, you know, all the things we had done. And so when we actually, when we leave it there, we just, we agree, I'm not going to pick that back up. I'm actually giving it to you. Yeah. You know, uh, how many of you guys know Danny Silk? Know of Danny Silk? Yeah. I love that guy. <laughs> he, uh, he's funny. I heard a message once and um, he was talking about forgiveness. And he said, you know, that idea of uh, letting go of your right to be right, right? I mean, how many people want to be right? I want to be right. I know I'm right. I'm, I'm right all the time. And, um, uh, but letting go of that, right? And he, he talks about, um, you know, when we don't let go of that, we pick up the, uh, what he calls the UUU gun, you know? And, and I don't know, maybe you guys can identify, maybe you can't, but, you know, when you get in, like, kind of a disagreement and you want to be right, it's like, you, 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 you know, and that's, 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 kind of, that's kind of what happens, right, when we hold on to bitterness, you know what I mean? We, we hold on to that thing and we get pretty trigger happy with uh, the you, 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 you gun. And, um, but that, that's, you know, that, that in essence is uh, kind of like what we've, what we've learned what forgiveness is. But the next thing really is kind of like why we forgive, right? And, um, you know, Mark 15, 38 here, it says forgiveness. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So in, in Mark 15, 38, he really talks about uh, the veil um, that was torn, right? The veil that was torn. And forgiveness is the central aspect in the gospel. And this is this idea that when heaven comes down to earth, what we unleash is this forgiveness. We unleash this power. 
when we kind of say, you know, that the, you know, the, the violent take it by force and the veil has been torn, we really unleash and we just loose what is in heaven on earth. Absolutely. So, and I love that picture. I love the idea that we were living in so much sin, but when Jesus came, and we all know this, we all know these scriptures so well, you know, the, the Lord's prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then right after this, if, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you not, do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I love this because Jesus is essentially saying, you want to bring heaven to earth? If that's what you want to do, you want to see the miraculous move, forgiveness is the way that we do that. We walk in love. We walk in forgiveness in our marriage. And even for, even for really hard things, I, I, I'm just even sensing that there's people in the room who have had a similar situation and, and you're sitting here and maybe even it's hard to release. And I just want to, I just want to release hope over you that if God can take us out of the situation we were in, that um, there's hope for any marriage or even any marriage that didn't work out. If you're sitting here and your marriage didn't work out because of what we went through, um, we want you to know that there's hope. There's hope to be restored and there's hope for, for a, a good future. Yeah. Yeah. She's a, uh, I told all the guys, I'm like, she's incredible, right? Incredible preacher. You know what I, uh, what I love so much is uh, obviously, uh, I mean, my favorite apostle is Peter, right? I mean, but we also joke around about Peter. And I think it's funny that in the Bible, like, you know, when, if there's anybody who's going to ask Jesus, like, hey, how many times are we supposed to forgive? It's the guy who, literally, like, Jesus forgave him, like, more than a couple of times. And I'll just, I'll just, you know, demonstrate here. So, obviously, we know about the time that, you know, Jesus, or that Peter denied Jesus three times. So, that, that could be one instance, maybe, where Jesus had to, you know, Jesus could say, look, well, Peter, that's one time. And then there's the time that uh, Peter refused to watch Jesus' feet. So, maybe that's another time that Jesus is like, well, when you're answering this, when you ask this question, Peter, maybe we need to just kind of use you as an example. And then, he, and then you know, Peter boasted about uh, the fact that he would die for Jesus, right, when he's on the boat, you know, and they're going, and then he falls asleep. And so, so I, I do find it a little bit comical that uh, Peter's the one who asks the question. But, you know, Jesus' response, um, you know, he says... Um, it says, not seven times, Peter, but 70 times, 70 times. And then he goes on and he gives a, he goes on after that and he gives a pretty illustrative example, right, about what happens and if we don't. You love the story. You share the story. So, you know, he uses the example in, in, in a little bit further down in Matthew 18, 23 through 34, about the master and the servant, Right? I do love the story. See, he starts talking, and then I'm like, I actually want to talk about it. <laughs> I do love this I illustration. It. No, I love this illustration because it really, it kind of represents what happens in the spirit when we don't, when we don't release forgiveness. And so we've all heard sermons on forgiveness. We've all heard these things, but something dramatic happens. Like we, through our inner healing and deliverance ministry, we've actually had people forgive someone, and then the next day they'll get a phone call from that person, or they will get one woman released forgiveness over her father, and she got a huge donation for school, and he had not spoken to her the whole time. And so there's actually power in forgiveness. And I love the parable of the unforgiving servant because it represents so well what happens in the spirit realm when we don't forgive. And so, of course, we know the story. It's in Matthew 18, 21 through 35, if you want to look at that. But we, I'll just paraphrase it because it's a little bit long. But of course, so the servant, the servant is forgiven from his master, from all of his sins. And of course, when he is asked to for, be forgiven for the same thing, he asks, his servant approaches him and says, well, can you extend the same mercy to me? And he says, no, he refuses to extend that same mercy. And the master finds out. And there's just one line in there at the end. And it says, because he refused to forgive, your heavenly father will do the same to you. And he was actually released to the tortures um, for his refusal to extend the same mercy. And um, so forgiveness is really about, 
when we release someone, it's actually like a ball and chain is kind of tied to yourself and the other person. And when we release forgiveness to them, we're actually severing that ball and chain. We're actually releasing. People always say, forgiveness is for you. You do it for yourself. And I would like to argue that that's not true. Forgiveness actually releases the other person as well. Forgiveness is a spiritual release. And regardless of what someone has done to us, I know there, you know, we've been through some really hard things in here. I know there's people listening who've been through some really hard things, but it is an actual severing from yourself to that person. It's a spiritual release. It lets them go, and it says, I'm not going to hold them responsible anymore. I'm giving them to Jesus. I'm letting Jesus deal with them, and I'm, I'm laying it down at the cross, and I refuse to hold on to that. And the, the one question I get asked the most, and I'm going off script, I'm sorry. Peter loves sticking to the outline. And I just like to go. But the question I'm asked the most is, Melinda, how did you forgive Peter? And, you know, my response is always the alternative would have been holding on to bitterness. It would have been holding on to my anxiety that I had. It would have been holding on to that pain. It would have been the alternative would have been living in torture. It would have been living with all of these things. And who wants to hold these, who wants a big uh, dead rat you're holding around, you know? But that's what it looks like when we hold on to those things. It's like when we don't give it to Jesus, we're carrying around garbage and we're car- and it's poison to us. It's poison to our souls. It causes us. I was freed from bitterness. I was freed from anxiety. I was freed from so many things. And I know in large part, it was my willingness to forgive Peter. And not because he turned around. Not because he said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Regardless, if Peter decides to leave me tomorrow, I am walking in forgiveness because I refuse to let anything get in between me and the Lord and what he did. He paid the biggest price on the cross when I just, you know, who it'd be like me looking at our Lord on the cross and saying, that wasn't a big enough price. I have to hold on to this. And that's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness, we release it, we give it to our king, and we say, I know what you know what to do with it. And we give it to our king, and he makes an exchange. And the beautiful thing is, he exchanges it. He exchanges it. You get beauty for ashes. So what did I get in return? I got peace. I have so much peace right now. I literally walk in so much peace. I used to think that all that was normal. I was like living with all this chaos. And I forgave Peter. And we also went through, we got delivered. I would, I would recommend, you guys have a ministry here. I would highly recommend going through that. It's amazing. But I was released from so much bondage just through the act of forgiveness. And so what the Lord did, how did I forgive Peter? I chose to do it. And the result was total freedom in my mind. He erased all the memories. He took, it was supernatural. It's God. He took away all those. I don't have any, there's no residue. You know, unforgiveness leaves residue. It leaves that nasty feeling. And kind of the way you know you need to forgive someone is if, what are you what are you meditating on you really want, pay attention to your thought life and that'll just be a a little bit of a clue to okay is there someone i need to release is there someone that i'm that i'm holding on to and maybe maybe it's your maybe it's yourself i'd love for you to talk about that too how you peter had to forgive himself too yeah you know um if uh you know if you walk sort of um in the space or in the realm of you're the cause of someone else needing to forgive you. Um, I mean, like praise Jesus, right? Like what he did in Melinda. And, um, and you know, my, I mean, you can extend it. My mother-in-law, you know, my, my entire family, my children, my children, my own children. And that's super, super powerful. But, um, what was hard for me was there was this, um, like, false humility, right, that walks around and then says, um, you know, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness, um, but I can't forgive myself, because if I forgive myself, I'm prideful. If I forgive myself, I am, um, I am in a way, being weak. And I'm leaving the door 
a little bit unlocked or open for it to happen again. That actually holding on to this is my security blanket to make sure this never happens again. This self-condemnation is ensuring that I'm never going to slip up like this again. I mean, that is so the like definition of captivity, and there's no freedom in that at all. And so, um, so forgiving myself was terrifying. I mean, absolutely, like, terrifying because, you know, and, and how many of you, like, you know, we talked a little bit about this this, this past the last couple of days, but how many of you have um, maybe given a word to somebody else, a prophetic word, or received a prophetic word, um, but just can't receive it? You literally are just like, I, I'm not worthy of receiving that. I would get words about, you know, you are a righteous man. You are a trustworthy man. Like you are, I, I got this one word once that was about, um, uh, you are going to be a uh, trustworthy father for younger women. And I was just like, no, I can't receive that. Can't receive that. I mean, this is like a, a prophetic word that God is speaking to someone. And I can't receive it because I won't let go of my own bitterness to myself. And this is not like a pity party for me, but it was just definitely something that I just had to work through and realize like that rat I was carrying, that was kind of a rat against myself. And, you know, we talk about kind of like walking in authority, you know, it was when I, when I, when I really forgave myself, what happened was my no was empowered. Now my no to porn, my no to lust, my no to pride, my, my just my no to anything the enemy was trying to like just like throw its hooks at was just way more powerful than what the enemy was trying to do. And all of a sudden, and then, you know, you do it a couple times, right? It's like lifting weights, right? You know, you, you just get stronger and stronger. And um, so, yeah, so that was a... Yeah, I... <laughs> Okay, it's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But I think, you know, yeah. the, the forget we had a big moment of forgiveness, right? We had, obviously, like a really, really big moment. But we also learned how to, um, the little moments, right? There's like little moments, like in your day-to-day -day life, you know, little kind of things. And, and we joke around about this. But how many of you guys here um, that maybe live like with, in a family or, or couples um, have, uh, have endured the thermostat wars? Anybody, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yep. Like, I, I want that thing pretty much off, like, all year round, right? Because I just, you know, when that thing gets on, I, I just see dollars, like, kind of going, and so I just want it off. Melinda does not see it that way, right? No. I don't like to be cold, and I like the heater on. And so we were having thermostat wars, and I even put a post-it on the thermostat that said, your wife is cold. And this went on for a little bit. The feeder would get turned on. it get turned back off, on, off, on. And then finally, one day, I realized I'm actually harboring some bitterness about this. I'm actually, and I had to ask the Lord, why, why is this so triggering? Why is this upsetting me? And he actually said, he said, it's not even about the thermostat. You're actually upset because you feel like Peter doesn't care about you. It's, it's so much deeper. You actually feel like Peter doesn't care about you being cold, and it actually goes back to childhood where you feel like he's not taking care of you. And so I, I went, oh, well, that's a lot deeper than a thermostat. And so I said, okay. So I went through a prayer of forgiveness. I forgave Peter, and I, and I released him. And then I went and talked to him, and I said, hey, when you said that, that actually hurt, or when you did that, that hurt my heart, and here's why. And then when I came to him, after I'd forgiven him, which is a big big thing in forgiveness. It's best to forgive the person even before you talk to them. And then you can approach them in love and speak directly to their heart and say, hey, I, this actually hurt my heart when you did that. And you're not coming with your guns out ready to like, you know, you, 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 you again. <laughs> and so I came to Peter and, and that's just a silly illustration, but it's really, it's really powerful because actually in a marriage, it's really easy for contempt to kind of build up and for little moments of unforgiveness to kind of build up into big moments till all of a sudden your husband didn't take the trash out and you're yelling at him. And you're like, why am I yelling at my husband? Well, because 
a little bit of unforgiveness goes a long way and it's built up over time. So it's important to just guard our heart, you know, out of, out of the life. Uh, oh, now I'm going to mess the proverb up. Thank you. <laughs> out of the, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we just want to be diligent to guard our heart, watch over our hearts, and walk in daily forgiveness, even if it's not a big thing that you're dealing with, even if it's a little thing. Um, just guarding over our heart, making sure we're not holding on to any, anything unnecessarily, any trash builds up to a big trash bag over time. Yeah, and you know, what we're not saying, obviously, is not having boundaries, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, we, the boundaries can be very healthy, all right? So what we're not saying is, um, you know, just leave yourself, uh, you know, susceptible to, to being hurt um, and just kind of leaving yourself open. Um, you know, one of the things I think that, um, when, you know, when we talk about... Um, Forgiveness, and it's kind of like when Melinda was talking about when she comes up to me in the thermostat thing, you know, and she's, she's like, um, "Hey, babe, like we need to talk about this thing because I was really hurt." Um, is 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 not this is what I call the kind of the yeah but syndrome, right? Yeah, but it's costing a lot of money. Yeah, but it's really not that hot. Yeah, but you're making it all, you know, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but. You know, where we're going as believers and spreading the gospel and taking this love out to the world and what you guys carry, what we experience here, I don't know, yeah, buts. You know, I felt like I should have written that on the rock, Travis. We threw on, yeah, but. I still, to this day, sometimes find myself, yeah, but. I mean, I, I, I get to hold on to this. And so, you know, what I think... Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about um, forgiveness and, and this bondage, this bondage to bitterness. Um, and, and really kind of, you know, where we want to go with this is, you know, how do we break free from it, right? So if there's something kind of stirring in you right now, and we talk about forgiving other people, we talk about forgiving ourselves, sometimes we even have to forgive God, right? God, where were you? God, how'd you let that happen? You know, those are um, the, the disappointing moments, you know, and, and or maybe even, I mean, I can't tell you how many altar calls I went to that, um, you know, there was, they were praying for people to break free from things, and I'm going up there, and I'm, and I'm hearing all these testimonies, and, I'm, and it's, not, it's not happening in my life. I'm a little frustrated. I get, I get a little frustrated. I say, God, like, how come? Why not me? Why not me? And I promise you, like, God's okay with you forgiving him. Like, he can, he can handle it. So good. So I, I, I'm sensing there's people in this room who have some forgiveness they want to do. And we, we really want to create a space for that. We want to create an opportunity. Um, but before we do that, I actually felt led. This isn't related to forgiveness. I know there's some youth in the room. Um, some of the middle schoolers, I would actually love if um, some of them would stand up. If you're here and you're part of the youth team, I actually feel like there's people here who are gonna who are gonna kind of pioneer a move to forgive. And and so, if are there any youth in the room? I feel like there's just a like a purity that they're gonna release, and I I'm I'm sensing. So if you're a youth, could you stand up? It, you you don't have to. You can be above eighteen if you there feel you go. if you're young. Ah, oh, guys, yeah. thanks for being so brave. Thanks, guys. Yeah. 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 Let's clap it up for them. Yeah. Yeah. I. There's just a call. There's a really God's really moving in our youth right now. And in fact, the young man here in the Levi shirt in the front. What what's your name? Nathan. Nathan, God's calling you an evangelist. He's actually calling you out, and he's saying that you, you're actually going to bring, you're going to bring forgiveness to the nations. You're going to teach about what it means to walk with Jesus, to walk in his love, to walk in his authority, to walk in wisdom. And so, yeah, we just bless you, Nathan. There's a really big call of God on your life, and we see it. We bless you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for the youth that are here, I know it's standing up isn't fun. I didn't see who the rest of you were, but I really feel like there's just a, there's a call 
for the youth to walk in, walk in that purity, walk in that love, and even in a high school situation where maybe nobody's walking in forgiveness, to teach people what it means to let go and to be the light, be the one that that says, I refuse to hold on to that. I'm letting it go. So we just we just bless the youth in the room to walk in that, walk in forgiveness, and and release other people and walk in the love of Jesus. And then we also wanted to create a space, if it's okay, to move yeah. on to this point. Or you yeah. want to? Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> we we would love just to create an opportunity, and we're not we're not going to ask for an altar call. We're not going to ask you to come up front, but we actually would love for everybody to stand up, and we just want to create a moment um, to make an exchange with Jesus because forgiveness is an exchange. And so what we do is we don't just come to Jesus and give him our garbage. We actually get to exchange it for something. We actually get to take peace back. We actually get to take back something that we need. And so I so desperately needed peace in that season where I was carrying around these rats when I was walking in this unforgiveness. I so desperately needed God to touch me with his love. I needed, I needed things from him. And so I just want everybody, if you wouldn't mind closing your eyes and just ask the Lord, is there anybody I need to forgive? And maybe it's yourself. Maybe you're holding on. I'm sensing that people who have even been through what we went through, but you were on the, the side of the person who did did the, the thing. You know, you've been holding on to that. And I feel like the Lord is ready to make an exchange with you and just to give it to King Jesus and forgive yourself and release yourself from that. He doesn't want us holding on to that. You know, Romans 8, 1 says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. When you're in the kingdom, he's, he's literally paid, Jesus paid the price for us to be free, to walk in total freedom. So if you feel like there's somebody on your heart, you can just say a prayer. You can say, Jesus, I choose to forgive. And then you can say the person's name out loud. It's good to say it out loud, whether it's yourself. Yeah, I give them to you. You could say, I, I lay down my right to hold on to that offense. And I lay it at the cross. King Jesus. And then I want you to ask the Lord for a picture of what he wants to give you in return for that. What he wants to give you in return for that thing. Yeah, and as you're in this moment where you're just just asking Jesus, you just you you want you want this exchange, this exchange of forgiveness. But you're having a hard time, maybe just letting go of that bitterness, whether it's forgiving yourself or somebody else or even God. And it's like oh, it doesn't feel like I'm just getting a full release. We just ask Jesus, say Jesus, show me the lie that I'm believing about myself. What is the lie that I'm believing that the enemy caused me to believe about myself in that circumstance? It's not about the circumstance. It's about your identity, who you are in Christ. Yeah, I believed a lot of lies that I wasn't good enough. I couldn't measure up. I was alone. Those were some of my lies. So ask Jesus, and we're going to exchange those. Yeah, and then just ask Jesus, say, Jesus, what is the truth that you would speak into my heart right now about who I am? It's the truth about who you are. It's the truth about who he created you to be. And after you've done that, if you feel like you've released someone, I would love the body of Christ is just amazing. If you feel like, hey, I just let someone go, if you just want to pop a hand up, and I'd love for people to just gather around that person, if you guys could just love on each other. Valley Church is so amazing. If you feel like, hey, I just forgave myself or I just forgave someone else, if you see someone with their hand up, just gather around them and just pray for them for a few minutes. And then we're going to eventually open it up for ministry time. Thanks, God. Yeah, just find somebody with their hand raised. You can put a, a hand on them or just even extend a hand out to them. Yeah, just go ahead, walk around the room, find somebody. Just start, speak into them. 
What, yeah. is, what is the truth that they need to hear? So the truth sets us free. But it says those who know the truth, know the truth, know the truth, know the truth. Just release truth. Yeah, and if you're on the ministry team, we'd love for you to um, come down whenever you finish up with those prayers. We'd love to just open it up. If you feel like you need a, a boost this morning, it doesn't have to be related to forgiveness, and you want some coverage, you want some love, we'd love you to come up.